In this video, we start discussing limits. Let's begin with an example and consider the function f that's given by the formula f of x equals x squared minus 1 over x minus 1. Well, you may notice that this function is defined makes sense for all numbers x except for x equals 1, where if you try to evaluate f of 1, it gives you 0 over 0, which is undefined. You would be dividing by 0. Nevertheless, the function makes sense for numbers x around 1, not equal to 1, so you can still ask the question, what happens to the function, what happens to the values of the function, that is f of x, when x approaches 1, when x gets closer and closer to 1, but does not equal 1. So feel free to pause the video and think about it. Think about what happens to f of x when x approaches 1. Perhaps make a table of values f of x with x near 1, getting close to 1, but not equal to 1, or plot the graph of the function f if you can to see what happens. Okay, I hope you paused the video and thought about it. If you plot the graph of f, you get something like this. Here's the graph of our function in red, and you can see that there is a hole in the graph at x equals 1. This is because the function is not defined there. However, and this is more important, as we let x approach 1, you can see x approaching 1 from the left here, through numbers less than 1, the output values f of x uh, are getting closer and closer to the number 2 along the y-axis. And the same thing happens when x approaches 1 from the right through input numbers greater than 1. The output values of our function f of x get closer and closer to the number 2 again. So at this point we may conclude that no matter how x approaches 1, this point on the number line that corresponds to 1, from the left or the right, the output values f of x tend to the number 2. This is the intuition behind the limit of a function. And in this case, we would say that the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x equals 2. Here is the informal definition of the limit of a function. I say informal because later we will update this definition to be more formal and more precise. But for now, let's just say that the function f has a limit l at the point a on the number line if the values f of x get arbitrarily close to l as x approaches a. Okay, so in this definition, this number l is the limit of our function f at the point a and the heart of the definition, the word that makes this definition work is this word arbitrarily. So arbitrarily in this context refers to the fact that you can have f of x get as close to l as you want it to. So to any precision you like by choosing your input numbers x carefully enough and by that I mean that they get close enough to that point a on the number line. Here is the notation that we use to express limits. We write these symbols and say that the limit x, uh, as x approaches a of f of x equals l, or sometimes we just simply use arrows to indicate that f of x tends to l or converges to l as x approaches a. Now with this definition and notation in place, we can return to our example and uh, explain or express what we saw there by using the notation, uh, we can write that the limit as x approaches 1 of x squared minus 1 over x minus 1 equals 2. We check this graphically, so we found the limit graphically by point, uh, plotting the graph of the function and seeing what happens to f of x when x approached 1 from either side and finding limits that way numerically or graphically is fine as long as it works but in certain cases that can be difficult or even misleading. So it is important that we develop more robust tools or approaches to finding limits. And now I'm going to show you a different approach, which is called the algebraic approach, where I will just start with the algebraic expression that was used to define our function, namely x squared minus one over x minus one, and manipulate this. So turn this algebraic equation um, expression into one that is equivalent to it um, but simpler so that we can read off the limit easily. Uh, what do I mean by manipulating it? Well in this fraction in the numerator you can see how there is a difference of squares namely x squared minus 1 squared so it is of the form a squared minus b squared which you all know how to factorize into the product of a plus b and a minus b. You remember that identity. So in this case that lets us write the numerator as the product of x plus 1 and x minus 1. Leaving the uh, denominator unchanged I just write x minus 1 
but then you notice how there's this shared common factor of x minus 1 between the numerator and the uh, denominator so we can cancel that that was the factor by the way which caused the problem when we plugged in x equals 1 that led to the 0 over 0 type of expression that we couldn't make sense of but now without that problematic factor we get something much simpler namely x plus 1 and since this relation makes sense for all numbers x uh, that is not equal to 1 as x approaches 1 these two, two expressions at, at the two ends uh, have the same behavior so as x approaches 1 intuitively it makes sense that x plus 1 tends to the number 2 hence the limit of our original function as x approaches 1 equals 2 well this algebraic technique we will develop further in a follow-up video um, and solve and find limits that way but this is enough for now let's turn to questions and problem solving Let's see if you got the idea of limits. So use the table of values to estimate, if possible, the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x. Pause the video and select your answer now. Okay, I hope you paused it and have went for the option that says uh, it seems that the limit is 0. And indeed, if you look at the table of values, x approaching 3 from either side, you see the values f of x get, getting closer and closer to the number 0. Note that we do not care about the value of the function at exactly x equals 3 because it might, may not even be defined at that point as we had it in, in the first example. So uh, we only care about the function's behavior as x approaches uh, the, our point of interest. Okay, next we have the graph of the function f here and we are asked to find the limit as x approaches 2. So pause the video and select your answer now. Okay, I hope you paused it and I went for the option that says uh, the limit equals 1 and indeed you can see in the graph as x approaches 2 from either side the points on the graph are getting up to the height 1 where the y value equals 1. Okay, next. Uh, is it true or false that the function can have multiple limits at a point? So pause the video and select your answer now. Okay, it's false. A function cannot have multiple limits at a point because if it had two dif distinct numbers for a limit, then by definition that would mean that f of x needs to, needs to get arbitrarily close to both of those numbers at the same time, which is not possible. Okay, find the limit as x approaches 2 of 7x plus 1. Pause the video and input your answer in the box. Okay, I hope you paused it and have inputted 15 for the limit. Here you can see, simply evaluate 7x plus 1 at x equals 2 to get 7 times 2 plus 1, that is 15. Find the limit as x approaches 3 for x uh, plus 2 over x squared minus 4. So pause the video and input your answer in the box. Okay, I hope you paused it and have inputted 1 for the limit. So this is similar to the very first example we saw. Here you can use this algebraic technique method uh, to uh, factorize, in this case, the denominator, which is a difference of squares. So just like we did previously, you can use the a squared minus b squared type of uh, identity to write the denominator as x plus 2 times x minus 2 and then cancel the common factor of x plus 2 leaving you with 1 over x minus 2 which can be evaluated at x equals 3 giving you 1 over 3 minus 2 that is 1. Okay I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.